Hello. I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Hey, before we go into today's broadcast, release your faith in agreement with me right now as we call for that daily bread. Are you ready? Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming from you and I take all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, if you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. I encourage you to do so even right now. Just click on that subscription button and also put on the notification. And then I give you the permission to share this message. If you think they are a blessing to you, then don't be selfish about it. Share so that everyone else can get blessed through you. Praise God. And then also I want to hear from you. Don't keep quiet. and just, mm, mm, mm. Let us know. Feedbacks are very important. It lets us know that we are reaching out to you and something is happening in your life. Praise God. And that's also a source of encouragement to us. So please do so. Don't, don't forget to send in a message. If you have a prayer request, don't hesitate. We pray for people every day. So send in your prayer request and God is going to do a miracle in your life. Praise God. Now we've been talking about the manifestation of eternal life. Now this message is so dear to God's heart. I was talking to you about the year we have just entered. The year of the door. And God is so interested about how you know him. God is so interested about how you know him. So Jesus wants us to know him. See, if we don't know him right, we will not walk in eternal life. And the purpose of God for man from the beginning is that man will have eternal life. Now we have, we have, you know, I was sharing this thing. I think when we started this broadcast, the first week or so, I was sharing with you what the Lord began to open my eyes to see. A lot of lies. Now, when I say a lot of lies, see, Satan is a twister. He knows what will give you life. But because he doesn't want you to have that life, he comes to twist it. So I shared with you how God had said in, in Genesis chapter 6, that my spirit will not always strive with man because he is indeed flesh and his days shall be 120 years. Now for so long, we have believed that that means God stated it, that man will live for 120 years. So every man that lives, once you get to 120, man, you live to the fullest. But that wasn't God, what God said at all. God has never given a time limit for man. No. Now, now you know, we believe that for so long until, until, see, the more you begin to learn of the Spirit and you go read those things you've read before, now you begin to question them like, uh, this, this contradicts what I've been hearing. <clears throat> see that now? Now you begin to look at it again and like, ah, man. so which is right? This one now or what I'm hearing? See? Now someone say, ah, the Bible can never be wrong. The Bible is never wrong, but the interpretation men have given to the Bible is wrong. Many of it are wrong. See, when we hear the Holy Spirit, then we come to look at the scriptures. Then we'll see in the true light now, this, this is where a lot of people have confusions. You know? hey, but why did the Bible say in this place? And then the Bible now say in this place. It is your interpretation that has a problem. It's not the Bible that has a problem. Grow up in your interpretation. Then come and look at it again. Like, oh, oh, oh. For example, now, now, 120 years. No, oh, God said man will live for 120 years. No, he didn't say so. 
actually, I shared this with you. Actually, what he meant was, look, I'm going to destroy everything in 120 years. And that was talking about Noah's flood. Now, a simple check will tell you that Noah, by the, from the time God spoke to Noah until the flood was over a hundred years. Yeah. Now you look at that and they were like, oh, okay. Now, people have said it took Noah over that long to build the ark. Now, I don't know for sure. The Holy Spirit have not told me this was how long the, it took Noah to build the ark. He hasn't said it, but um, there are speculations like that. But I believe it must have taken him a good number of years. Yeah, I believe so. But it's not easy downloading. Now, he's never seen an example of an ark before. So he, he, he was receiving instructions from the Lord concerning what he was building. He was building according to the vision he was seeing. Remember, God gave him the dimensions to that ark. So that was a faith work for Noah. Now, guess what? Noah built that ark because he believed in the things he was hearing. So Noah believed in the gospel. Are you seeing this now? He believed in the gospel. The gospel had warned him that rain is going to come. So build an ark. So he began to respond by building the ark because he believed in what he heard. If he hadn't believed, he would have been destroyed with the flood. You see that now? So Noah was a man of faith. How? Faith came to him by hearing the voice of God. So he heard the voice of God. He responded by building the ark, which was his work of faith. See, faith without works is dead. So faith came. Nobody saw faith coming to Noah, but everybody could see his work. Why are you doing this thing? I'm doing this because of the faith that has come to me. Are you getting this now? So now the same thing. Why are you doing what you're doing? The gospel has been preached to me. Who preached the gospel to you? Christ. Nobody sees Christ preach, preaching the gospel to you. But everybody can see the way you live your life. The way and manner you live your life will tell what you are responding to. If you are responding to faith, then your works will be the works of faith. You see that? So if you are not responding to anything, yet you say, I hear God, then he says it is dead. So faith without works is dead. Show me your faith without your works and I'll show you my faith by my works. So you can't even show faith without works because nobody will even know that faith came. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He doesn't say, oh, oh, God have told me I'm healed. If God have told you you're healed, why is he lying down? You see that now? Why is he lying down? And no, it's just that, uh, you know, it's not that it's... In, no, 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 you have, faith has not come. Faith has not come. I know many people have misinterpreted that, you know, say, faith without works is dead. Now you're believing God for prosperity. Go and get a job. That has nothing to do with faith. Going to get a job has nothing to do with faith. Going to struggle out there has nothing to do with faith. If you are not responding to the word of God that has come to you, then you are not doing the works of faith. If you are, for example, someone say, I have faith, I've asked God for money and I believe he has given me the money. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call a hundred people on my contact and ah, I'm going to ask every one of them for a hundred dollars each. And ah, at least 10 will respond. If 10 respond, I get my $1,000. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And then you're not carrying for You've not heard from the Lord. You've not heard God. You haven't. If faith has come to you, faith will tell you what to do. And when faith tells you what to do, now there are, there are people, I, I want you to understand this. There are people 
you know, you know, this, this is where the understanding of the character and mind of God is so important. Okay. Someone says, the Bible says, he that does not walk, let him not eat. Yes. Did the Bible say so? Yes. Is that what God said? No. You see that? Now, it's written in the Bible doesn't mean it was God that said it. And it doesn't also mean it expresses God's character in the light to which it's being used. So people use that scripture to say, if you don't have a job, don't eat. But simple logic will tell you, you can only say that to somebody that you are feeding. If somebody is not begging you for food, you can't make that statement to him. See that? So that couldn't be God saying so. Because that in itself contradicts the message of Christ. The message of Christ clearly has stated, take no thought for your life, saying, what will I eat? Or clothes, what will I put on? And then he even said, consider the lilies. Consider the birds. They don't sow. They don't labor. Yet your father feeds them. Then he says you are far better than them. Okay? Now, think about this. Does that sound like the same person that will say anyone who does no work should not eat? Now, people have read that and say, ah, I'm eating. I don't have a job. I'm eating. Or some will say, hmm. Mm, you, you, you got some money. You want to buy that thing? Have you labored for it? Have you worked for it? Have you earned a salary that can afford that thing? You better reduce your standard. You see, now they bring all those things from wherever. But not Christ. Not Christ. Christ will tell you, now the just shall live by his own faith. And I explained that to you yesterday. Christ, you, 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 you hear faith from Christ. Christ preaches to you. Christ tells you, your father will take care of you. Your father will take care of that bill. Ask him. If you can just pray, God will answer you and that need will be met. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. But how will the need be met? How? When you are behaving like Zachariah. Father, now, now, now imagine someone who, who you need to pay your house rent, for example, and you've been out of job for most part of the year. Nothing has been saved. Nothing. And then you're like, wow, I, I don't need a miracle to pay this rent at the end of the year, or wherever you pay. And then you begin, Father, huh, Lord, I need a miracle. My rent is due next month. I don't even have a job. I need a miracle. And then God comes to you and says, you will pay the rent. And guess what you now say? Hey, how? How? You're asking God, how? Those are things that get God upset. Especially the angels. It gets them upset. Now, there are times men have asked God that kind of question. And God really, really got upset. You remember in the wilderness, the people asked Moses for meat. And Moses said, are you guys, how do you, Moses, we really want meat. Ah, and Moses turned to the Lord and said, Lord, can you imagine these people? Can you imagine they are asking for meat? God said, uh-huh. If they want meat, we'll give them meat to eat. Then Moses now said, how? God said, Moses, do you know who you're talking to? That really got God upset. That's when God told him, says, Moses, hey, they are not going to eat meat once. They will eat meat until it comes out of their nostrils. It was the question Moses asked the Lord. The how. How are you going to get meat? This is wilderness. Where do, how many cows are you going to kill for all this? How? How? And when I go, you need to repent. Many of you need to repent. When God decided to give them meat, he didn't touch one cow of theirs. He didn't touch one goat of theirs. They had goats. They had cows. They had bulls they were walking, they, they, they were traveling with. God didn't say, 
you know God could have said, bring five bulls and then this is it. And then it will just multiply and they'll share it. God didn't touch one. He fed them with meat for a whole month. That's the one we are talking about, brothers and sisters. Then Zachariah was the next person that said, how? How? And he's been praying for his son. He's been praying for a child. At his old age, he's been... Now think of when he started praying. It became part of their daily routine prayer. You know, Father, you know, we, you know, you bless us with children. You have promised, oh God, you will do it this year. You will do it this year. And now an angel comes to him and said, your prayer has been answered. God will give you a son. Said, How? We are old. Huh? Do you know who's talking? Moses was the other fellow. I'm a stammerer. I, I, I can't go. You know, God says, look, I made the mouth. I made the tongue. Moses was there. Ah. God got upset with Moses. I said, hey, Moses, your brother is an eloquent person. Oh, yeah, go. He will follow you. He will join you. God said that out of anger. He was upset with Moses because Moses was asking, how in doubt. So when Jesus said, take no thought, he meant take no thought. So you see, many times people quote things from the Bible without reasoning. Who said it? Is this God that said it? That was Paul that said that, made that statement that anyone who doesn't work, let him not eat. And Paul simply said that not referring to anyone who does not have a job should not eat. That's not what Paul was talking about. Now, because the people, majority, you know, the, the church then had this communal lifestyle that they were living, especially in those cities and nations where um, the people were hostile to the believers. So they were always living together. Now, we don't face such hostilities like that, you know, except in a few areas, you know, today, yeah. So that moved them to be living that communal. So many of them needed things. See? So you remember in the early church, people who had land sold it and they brought the, the money to the apostles with, and distribution was made to everybody so that no man lacked anything. Now, while they were all living like that, everybody was contributing his quota. Now, what do you mean contributing his quota? Everybody was busy. Not that I just come wake up in the morning and be shaking your leg and say, hey, where is food? Is there food? Now, that was what Paul was referring to. Anyone who doesn't get involved in the work that we are doing, don't give him food. See? He was referring to the pastor. Don't give him food. Anyone who does not work, the work he was referring to is not have a job. He was referring to the work of the ministry that they were all doing together. Anybody who's not involved, that means he's not part of you. So don't give him food. Are you getting this now? Yeah, because now when you, when you study this and then you look at what Paul, the same Paul said, he said, anyone who steals should steal no more, but rather let him walk, laboring with his own hands. Look at what he now said. So that he will have to give to him that needs. Hold on there. So the purpose of walking is not to eat. The purpose of walking is to give. Yes. Why? Now, he was referring to the one who steals. So that's the lowest form. You're stealing because you don't believe. So instead of stealing, go get a job, make some money, then start the operation of faith by giving. So when I hear people say, you don't get blessed by giving, they are liars. They don't know Jesus. They have not come in through the way. Believe me. They don't know Je Anyone who's telling you, you must have a job before God can prosper you. They don't know Jesus. It's good to have a job. Are you getting what I'm saying? But anyone who tells you that if you don't have a job, God cannot prosper you, that person does not know Jesus. They don't know God. And they are leading you into bondage. That bondage of the mind. 
So now you begin to think, I need to have a job for God to bless me. It is wrong. It is wrong. And why am I saying it is wrong? It has blocked so many from believing the gospel. So now they believe the gospel, but then they are distracted in what they will eat. So many are now, are now chased by that fear. Even when, when they, they see faith working, their mind is still like, it's just working for now until I get a job. It's just working for now until I get a job. No, sir. No. It works every time, in every season, whether you have a job or you don't have a job, faith always works. <laughs> Praise God. My time is up. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Make these words of your truth louder in your hearts till they hear you. Till they hear you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.